praise your all on the altar of the sacrifice laid. Your heart does the spirit control. You can only be blessed, have peace and sweet rest as you yield in your body and soul. Today we humble ourselves in the presence of our holy and a just God. As Paul said for this cause, I bow my knees to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We come humbly before the Lord today, realizing humble is the way. Praise the Lord. We thank God for all the things that He has done. We take no credit for what the Lord do. All the credit goes to the Lord. Today, Thank God for all of you that are here. To those one day, hopefully, will be able to view this service by the way of YouTube, which is a good method that we can use to proclaim the gospel. Praise Him. Back in the Bible time, there's no such thing as YouTube. If you wanted to get a word out, you had to get on a donkey, get on a horse, or as they say in Africa, use your two keke. That's your two feet. Can you go to deliver the message? But I thank God that the Lord has blessed man with the knowledge, amen, to be able to use for different means or reason. And I'm glad that we can take advantage of it to be able to put God's word out there. And I say it is God's word because I believe whenever preachers stand up to deliver the Bible or what's written in the Bible, as the Lord told Ezekiel, he says, son of man, son of man, give them warning for me. So it's important for the preachers to hear from the Lord and to realize that it is God's word. And must always remember that the people that are in the body of Christ, praise the Lord, do not belong to the pastor. It's not the pastor's sheep. This constitution says we are his people and the sheep of his pastor. So, we don't own the people, praise the Lord. We just preach the word of God. And sometimes one water, one plant, one water. But it takes the Lord to give the increase. If the Lord do not give the increase, well, we can increase it if we want to. We can praise Him, but we'll be just like the disciples then that got ahead of the Holy Ghost. Praise Him. They got ahead of the Holy Ghost and they said, well, Judas is dead. There must be one to take his place. And they decide to, as the late Minister Gene used to say, Get ahead of the head of me or something like that. Don't get the head of me. 
Praise the Lord. And they began to cast Lot. The Lot fell on Matthias. That's what they thought. Praise the Lord. But the Lord had one that was born out of due time. And I want you to know the one that took Judah's place was Saul of Tarsus. Mm -hmm. Then his name was changed to Paul. Praise the Lord. So we don't ever want to get ahead of the Lord. And we must always remember as we come into the house of God, this is not our show. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. It is not our show. It's the Holy Ghost show. Praise the Lord. We just here carrying it out. But the Holy Ghost is the conductor. And we just follow the Holy Ghost. Today, here's a verse of scripture that's being fell in my heart. There's a few things that the Lord had brought back to my mind. And I begin to go over. You know, sometimes you can write things down and you forget about it. And then sometimes you start going back through your notes and realize, wow, I mean, I got this much information. Praise the Lord. The Lord took me back to a few things and I'm going to say a few words today. By no means do I plan <clears throat> on doing more than what the Lord allowed me to do. Call your attention today to the book of Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55, verse number 1. Praise him. When you have it, you can let it be known by the saying of Amen. Amen. Praise him. Isaiah 55, I'll read. I hear pages turning, so that lets me know you're trying to find it. Isaiah chapter 55. O oh, everyone that thirsty, come ye to the waters. And he that had no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread? and your labor for that which satisfieth not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercy, mercies of David. Six, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. We're going to finish with nine. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Can we say amen? amen? Just a few words today. 
Seek ye the Lord. Seek ye the Lord. If I don't say much today, don't leave without remembering the subject. Seek ye the Lord. Mother Payne read a scripture last Sunday that the uh, harvest is past. The summer is ended. Said we still not saved. But it's still good to know that God is forever merciful. He is forever long suffering. And it's the goodness of God that bringeth man to repentance. I thank God because He's a God of great mercy. And I want you to know that mercy, praise the Lord, reign over judgment. Or mercy rejoice over judgment. I feel it's time for all of us praising. Now I'm not just talking to the unsaved. I'm talking to all of us that are here praising. Because it could be that some of us have left off our first love. Praise the Lord. It's time for us to seek the Lord. I believe Paul said in the book of Romans chapter 13, he said, The night is far spent. The day is at hand. The night is far spent. Said the days at end. Mm -hmm. Said us, let us cast off the works of darkness. <clears throat> and time for us to put on the armor of light. The coming of the Lord is soon. Praise Him. You said, Preacher, well, when will He come? I don't know. <clears throat> but I do know the signs He told us that will happen before he returned. But we're living in a time where everybody, or not everybody, a lot of people are busy, but they're not busy about the right thing. Or they're not busy concerning the right reason. But the Lord is saying, oh, everyone that thirsty. Come ye to the waters. If you're thirsty today, you can come to the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise There's a fountain that you can draw water from. Amen. Praise the Lord. Your life is dried up and you're trying to, amen, to be able to find some life somewhere. Praise Him. I've come to find out in life a lot of times we're not making no progress because of who we have in our life. Praise the Lord. There's a saying, show me your company and I'm going to tell you who you are. You know, walking with the Lord, the Lord will teach us things as we walk with Him. And a lot of times, the Holy Ghost is trying to speak from the inside, but we're distracted by what's on the outside. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're distracted so we cannot hear the voice internally because of what we see around us. 
Some of us could be in a better place. Some of us could be way down the road. But you know why we stuck in places? <clears throat> We're running with the wrong folks. <clears throat> now, I want to take you to a scripture, like I said, I not, may not jump and shout today, but I want to say a few things today, and I want everybody that is here to listen. Praise the Lord. There was a king that was born, a very wise king. The Lord said, ask of me what you will. He said, I'll give it to you. This young man told about it, said, wait a minute. I remember a conversation me and my father had before he died. And he, he instructed me on what to do and what steps to take, yes. how to proceed, how to go forward. And I remember in the midst of that conversation, he said, I go by the way of all the grave. Mm -hmm. But he said, when I'm gone, show yourself a man. Then he also said that, ask the Lord for wisdom. Because wisdom is the principal thing. King David died, went off the scene, and Solomon remembered the conversation that he had with his father. The Lord said, Solomon, ask me, what do you want? Pretty sure if the Lord should ask us today what we want him to do, I'll be honest with you. I said, Lord, be nice if I can get my mortgage pay off. <laughs> no, you don't have to say anything. I'm telling you what I would say too. All right, I'll be honest. Yeah. So Lord, it'd be nice if I can get my mortgage paid off and Car paid off, that's right. <laughs> Certainly. Huh? I'll be able to at least maybe hopefully retire. <laughs> Praise him. Some of us might say, well, Lord, give me a million dollars. Some would say, Lord, just make me better. Praise the Lord. You can ask the Lord and you can tell him all the stuff you want. And I'm pretty sure all of us got a list, don't we? Amen. Praise him. Some of us probably get tired of living from check to check. Praise him. You know the stress it brings on, don't you? Sometimes you feel like just pulling your hair out. When it, you know, if you're like me, you ain't got much to pull. Uh -huh. But sometimes situation comes up and it puts us in a place that our head is beneath the water. And if the Lord can do something to bring us to a place that we don't have to worry about certain things. Some of us will say, Lord, I want to be healthy. Sure enough, I want to be healthy, don't you? Because you can have all the money, if you're not healthy, you ain't going to enjoy it. Praise it. But Solomon said, Lord, give me wisdom. Why do you want wisdom, Solomon? For what purpose? See, you must have a purpose in life. Sad that. Going right back to the scripture, Mother Payne read last week, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and some still have not figured out their purpose. Have you ever asked the Lord, what is your purpose? Why did He allow you to be born? Because maybe your mother could have worried you. Something could have happened to you, but you're still alive. Have you ever sat down and said, Lord, why am I on this earth? 
Why? When there are many children, even before they come out their mother's womb, they are dead. They die in the womb. And some of them, after they give birth, some of them die later on. And there are situations that maybe some of us have been through your actions at the question, Lord, am I still alive? Yeah, Lord, why, why, is it I'm, why is it that I'm still here? You know, there's a purpose that God still have you on this earth. Man. Praise Him. Some of us may think, well, I'm alive just to work and pay a few bills, and when I'm finished, I just kick the bucket and I'm going home. That's all. <laughs> See, everybody on this earth is here for a reason, and you have something to offer. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is still in you something that you have, and he allows you to still breathe unto this day. Amen. Praise him. But the question is, not too many knows the reason why they're still on this earth. Praise the Lord. I do know one thing when it comes to the church. Why we were chosen in Jesus before the foundation of the world. And that is, we should be holy. And before, that's that without blame, before him in love. But there are many things that the Lord would want us to do, but he can't do it, he can't fill you, he can't clothe you, he can't feed you. Like I said, because you know what? Sometimes we are so far from God's purpose. Praise him. When I ask you a question, I'm going to show you something. If you want to go to Geneva, will you not take the route to get you to Geneva? If you want to go to Geneva, there is no reason for you to get on roads that will take you far from Geneva. Do I make sense? Praise the Lord. You have in your mind and the direction that you're trying to go. There are many roads, many paths that you can take. Some will get you there. Some will take you the opposite direction. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. If you're trying to go to heaven and taking the route that takes you to hell, that's where you would end up. Praise you. If you're trying to go to heaven and take the route that leads to hell, that's where you're going. And vice versa. So Jesus said, strive to enter in at the street gate. You got to strive. I will strive to enter in at the straight gate. A lot of times we lose the stride that we have. But you know why? Some of us start listening to the wrong people. Listen to me today. See, there are many voices out there today, but not everybody have a right to speak into your life. <coughs> Praise it. Not everybody have a right to speak into your life. I've made this illustration before. Praise the Lord. You having problems in your marriage? And somebody trying to speak into your life and they don't went through 10 marriages. What can they offer you? <laughs> That's right. How to keep on messing up? Thank you. You're right on track. Praise Him. Now I want to go to somebody that be able to direct me in a way. You understand to bring about a resolution. Somebody that can cause me and stimulate my mind and my situation.
situation to get to a better place. So if you ain't got nothing good to speak into my situation, I don't have time to listen to you. Because my situation is a mess. I don't need somebody to add more mess. Right. I'm trying to clean up my mess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Almost as though they understand you go to the restroom, you need toilet paper, don't you? Yeah. I hope you do. <laughs> Praise him. Back in my country when we was growing up, some of the boys, we got leaves. <laughs> oh, it's some kind of... Oh, Lord, really? <laughs> but you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> Somebody said, me, I'm going to leave. <laughs> but you know you need something to clean yourself up. It's a bad thing to go to the bathroom and just don't clean yourself up, period. And know you got to go into the company of others. Now you know how they're going to feel. You can ask yourself, why folks do this? Why they start, oh, have you ever talked to people and they start backing away? You start getting away. There got to be a reason. And something you start going to there's a lesson I'm trying to get to. You know that there's a problem. You know it needs attention. But you neglect to fix it. This world is filled up with fools. I'm going to say it again. This world is filled up with folks that are fools. How many of us want to be wise? Solomon left on record. What if you get me Proverbs chapter number 11 verse 4? Proverbs chapter 11. Verse number four, please, mother. Proverbs chapter 11, verse number four. I got a few scriptures the Lord stirred back up in my mind. Proverbs chapter 11, verse four. Riches. Prophet not. Profit not in the day of wrath. In the day of wrath. But righteousness. Righteousness. Deliver it from death. Deliver it from death. There's there's a there's a verse there in Proverbs that Solomon talked about. He that wanna be wise. Sorry, man, I thought that's the one I wrote down the wrong one. But he that want to be wise must walk with wise men. If you want to increase your folly, then walk with foolish folks. <clears throat> See, there's a lot of people right now that may be in your life that don't deserve to be in your life. Praise it. See, you want people in your life to stimulate your goals that you're trying to achieve. Crazy. It? it don't make no sense you studying to be a doctor and you're following someone that is a mechanic. You want to be a doctor but you're studying how to fix car. When will you ever learn how to fix the body? There are people right now, and it could be some of your own friends and some of your own family. Let me say this. There are some people that ain't going nowhere in life, and they're trying to take you with them. I've come to a place. 
face and I, I hope that we all, all of us can hear what the Lord is saying and begin to seek the path that the Lord has chosen for us. Praise the Lord. You get to a place in life where you need to start analyzing everybody in your life. And ask yourself, <clears throat> are they an asset or a liability? Praise it. The ones that are asset, you want to keep them. The ones that are liability, it's time for you to start weaning yourself off of them. There are some people that you don't need in your life. There are some family members that you don't need in your life. But you forever holding on to them. The reason why you ain't going nowhere is because your hanging with folks ain't going nowhere. I have no time to waste. None. None. Praise the Lord. The Lord promised us 70 years, and if by reason of strength, you'll live longer. If you're 40 something, and you're supposed to die at the age of 70, you're going to pass the 50 mark. So you ain't got time to waste. You ain't got time to stop by the wayside and listen to no food. Listen to what the Lord is saying. <laughs> I said, well, no acid, liability, start, dissected, the list probably was this long, by the time the Lord get through with your list, it may be up to here, because sometimes the people in your life ain't nothing but dead weight, Amen. and sometimes the Lord said, you running with too many folks. See, I want to deliver you. I want to do a work in your life. But the people you surround yourself with, they are not the right folks. The Lord said, give you new God to me. I can't give you the victory. I can't allow you to win the battle because some of the folks you got right there, you think they are for you and they have the right heart. But I'm telling you, they don't mean you no good. Lord says, send the fearful and unbelievers back home. Mm -hmm. I wasn't very good at math, but he started off with 32,000. Mm -hmm. 22,000 were fearful.
Am I right? Am I on track? So on the 300 that was left, Lord said, I'm going to take the 300 and they're going to win this battle. Amen. You must know who is in your circle. Don't just take it because somebody say they're all right. You go believe it that they're all right. <clears throat> My family said something out. It was a girl, a lady. She said, now these days, all the women there are trying to look beautiful and they're trying to go natural. They need all the extras. She said, what's wrong with the natural? What's wrong with it? She said, them boys don't want to look at natural. They want artificial still. So she went and she got her a wig. <laughs> Put the wig on. Get some earrings in I mean, when I look at her, she looked totally different. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, she looked much better. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So she went out somewhere and a man saw her. Now, when she was looking at you, that man didn't even pay her no mind. All right. I don't want that. She said, I, I set you up pretty good. Praise the Lord. So she went home and got good, looking good, and came back. The same fellow that said, I don't want that true. When he saw that, he said, Wow, my goodness. Has anybody told you how beautiful you are? <laughs> she said, You went to the Bible. She said, What you want? She said, I some lunch or something. Oh, he was so excited. Oh, he started buying the lunch. When he turned his back, she started going like this. And then she took the wig off. <laughs> when he turned around, <laughs> the girl, the woman is right in front of him. He looked in to try to find the girl that he thought that he was buying the lunch for. <laughs> but she's standing right there. He's looking around. Where is she? Uh, excuse me. Give me my lunch. He said, you? He said, I'm looking for somebody. She said, I'm the same person you taught. That was so beautiful. She took her lunch. And he went his way. You know what she did? She took that lunch and she went over and ate it. And gave it to her children. Stop settling for the wrong deal. <laughs> if you listen to this, somebody said this, and I thought about how powerful it is. If you tolerate mediocrity, if I said the word right. If you tolerate that in others, there's a possibility that's what you become. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by mediocrity? Average. The norm. You don't see no way to grow. You accept in the average. But you don't have to live your life by average life. One day Jesus walked on the earth, did miracles on the earth, and then one day he told his disciples, launch out into the deep. Do you hear him say, come to the deep? But you can't go to the deep if you ain't surrounding your people that have a mind to go into the deep. Praise him. I want us to think soberly, and the Lord wants all of us to think soberly. If you're thirsty today and you're going to the wrong place to be filled, you'll never be filled. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel 
of the ungodly. Nor stand it in the way of sinners, nor seat it in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. receive some life. You know why you still dead today? Because you listening to dead folks. Praise him. You know why you ain't going nowhere in life? You listening to dead folks. And how can a dead man speak life into you? But the Lord said, for oh, everyone that thirsts, come to me. Are you here now? Some of you got your confidence in your nice house. I want to show you what's going to happen to your mansion. Matthew chapter 24, verse 1. Matthew 24, verse 1. Read, mother, please. And Jesus went out. Jesus went out. And departed from the temple. Departed from the temple. His disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. For him to show him the building of the temple. The disciples then began to show Jesus how beautiful the buildings were. Uh -huh. Jesus said unto them, But listen to what Jesus never agreed with them about looking at how beautiful it is. Jesus saw the end of it. Not all these things. Don't look on it right now. Verily I say unto you. Verily I say unto you. There shall not be left here one stone upon another. All of these buildings that you don't put your confidence in, the Lord said they're coming a day when I'm going to tear them all down. It should not be thrown down. Praise the Lord. You understand? Listen to the Lord today. You want peace? Seek the peace. The one that is able to bring peace in your life. Get away from folks. Praise the Lord. Amen. Solomon said it like this. It's a sport to a fool to keep on causing mischief. Praise it. It's a sport to a fool to keep on causing mischief. Some people think causing problem is a game. They enjoy creating, making problem to them. It's a sport. But what does the Lord say about it? I'll tell you what the Lord is saying today. It's time to seek me. You want a way out? The only way out is me. You want everlasting life? I'm the only one that has it. It's in me. If I don't give you everlasting life, you ain't got none. I'm going to show you a story. I'm going to tell you a story, matter of fact. There was a woman that had no children. Elijah, every day, would pass by her house. She went to her husband and said, Honey, this man is a righteous man. He's a holy man. He ain't got nowhere to stay. Let's fix a room up for him in our house. 
her husband agreed to it. Later on, Elijah said to Gehazi, Gehazi, this woman has shown us great kindness. What is it we can do for her? Gehazi went and began to question them. Um, I don't see this, I don't see that. He went back to the man of God and said, Elijah, she ain't got no children. Elijah walked up to the woman and said, come here. About this time, next year, you're going to have a child. Praise the Lord. Amen. The same time the following year, that woman had a son. Amen. One day, the son went off with his father. Mm -hmm. Father was in the field. And the son began to cry out for his head. Sometimes children begin to cry out, but parents don't pay attention. And we wait till it's too late, and sometimes people die because we procrastinate. The father said, wait a minute, take this child back to his mother. Take him back to his mother. I ain't got time to deal with that, I'm trying to work. They brought the child back to the mother. The mother took the child and placed the child on her lap and tried all she could to calm the child down. By noon, the child was dead. Praise the Lord. Hmm. And put the child on the man of God's bed. And told her husband, I'm going to see the man of God. The husband said, it's not even time to go see the prophet. You can't appear before the time. But the wife said, that's all right. My need is urgent. She told the man that was riding the chariot, don't slack your riding. Don't slow down unless I need you to slow down. Get to the man of God. When Elijah saw her, the woman ran and grabbed Elijah. Elijah's servant took the woman and about thrust the woman away. Elijah said, don't you do that. There's a reason why she's acting the way she is. The woman said, man of God, I told you not to deceive me. You told me the Lord was going to bless me with a child. Now my son is dead. What good was the Lord blessing me with a child? Then my child died. For what purpose? Elijah looked at his servant and took his rod, his staff, gave it to his servant, and said, go take it and place it next to the child. Run ahead of me and place it next to the child. Gehazi went and placed it next to the child. Nothing happened. Ran back to the man of God said, man of God, the child is still dead. Elijah said, that's all right. I know what must be done. When Elijah got to the house where the dead child was, Elijah went in the room, locked the room. The reason why your life is a mess is because you don't let too many folks in your room. The reason why some things will never be fixed, too many people are speaking into your situation. Elijah said, for this problem to be fixed, I have to get rid of all distraction on the outside. You ain't going nowhere until you get rid of those distractions. 
I'm going to bring it a little heavy right now. I'm going to ask you a question. You that are wives, which wife can tell me the reason why God made Eve? Why did God make Eve? Help me. Ah, stop, stop, stop. God said, I'm going to make this man a what? Stick with the Constitution. So the question is to every wife. If you ain't helping your husband, you ain't doing what God told you to do. Mm. If you ain't doing what God told you to do, you far away. That's not 
you, that's not your face. And you look at the consultant and say, they right, you got an address? <laughs> Some of you are changing the direction the Lord is trying to lead you down because somebody has to tell you that's the wrong direction. Amen. Elijah got to the room, lock the door. You want to get somewhere in life? Lock the door. Elijah began to pace the floor. After a while, Elijah went on the child, stretched his hand, mouth to mouth. You understand? Why Elijah did that? Because what was in Elijah needed to get in the child? You can't get nothing out of nothing. If somebody has nothing to offer, why are you still asking them? If I have a cup with no water in it, why would you tell me pour water out? That don't make no monkey sense. Amen. You gonna tell me ain't no water in it, so why you tell me pour water out? First I gotta go put water in it on the pour it out. If you ain't got nothing to give, then you can't give nothing. Amen. Elijah had life in him because he was connected to the life giver. Elijah spreading that child after a while the child flesh began to get warm. What are you trying to say? You listening to the wrong preacher that ain't got no life. A dead preacher cannot give you life if they're dead. And a blind preacher can't lead you nowhere but to the ditch. If the blind lead the blind, all them going to the ditch. Don't let no blind people lead you. Trust the man of God's word. Believe the Lord, so shall you prosper. So shall you be established. Believe the prophet. But I don't have to do what the preacher said. You don't have to. But once the preacher don't give you and read the Constitution, it lets you know if you want to go to heaven, you must take the road that leads you to heaven. You can't take the road that leads to hell and get to heaven. Stop wasting your time. Wasting your time. I'm quoting the words of Solomon today. Mm -hmm. If the axe be blunt, you're going to use up more energy. Crazy. If the axe that you're trying to cut down the tree with is blunt, you're using up energy that you don't have to. So what you need to do is wet the edge. What do you mean wet the edge? Sharpen it. When it gets sharp, you have to, you, you cut the energy that you would use in half. Some of you try to cut things down and what you're using is blunt. I feel so full today that I want to preach even more and give more. But some may say, well, you didn't jump in and shout it, so um, you don't have my attention. The Holy Ghost got your attention. Seek ye the Lord while he may be what? Call upon him while he's what? Amen. Don't let the Lord get too far from you that you cry and he don't hear you. You want to make sure that when you begin to sing, he's right next to you. When Peter began to sing, he knew who was right next to him. You know what Peter said? Lord, save me. Are you crying out for the same thing today? 
but you can keep on drowning in sin. And don't cry out for help and see what happened. As the story was going on, the Lord said, the boat, the man said, I'm waiting on the Lord. He said, the helicopter, I'm waiting on the Lord. Keep waiting and see what happened. Ask yourself the question, when is my end? Raise your hand if you know your end. I'm going to close out. It's time to seek the Lord. The reason why you're howling, the reason why you're giving up a certain sound, is because you're running with wolves. If you run with wolves, you'll act like them. But how many want to be associated with the eagle? There are two animals. One rule the earth, one rule the heaven. The lion, he's the king of the jungle, isn't he? Is he the strongest animal on the earth? Is he the largest one? Is he the smartest one? But why do they call him the king of the jungle then? You know why all of them are afraid of him? Praise him. Because he believed. Praise him. See, he believed and he got it inside of him. I'm not afraid of none of them. If you get what I'm saying today by the Holy Ghost, you'll never be afraid of nothing if you realize what you got on the inside. When the lion show up, watch all them start running, don't they? All of them start running. Because if it's lunchtime, when the lion see you, that's lunch. Dinner time, that's dinner. Then you go to the eagle. <clears throat> As the eagle, the Lord stirred in this. I'm in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32. As the eagle stirred her nest. I want to know which bird can you compare to an eagle? An eagle fly by themselves. You will never find, y'all remember me saying this a year or two ago? You'll never find an eagle running with who? You'll never find an eagle associated with pigeons. They make too much noise. <laughs> the eagle said, I'm flying solo. See, some of you feel like you need folks in your life. And because you need folks in your life, you go grab up the wrong people. Just because you want to be associated with some people, you don't need to be associated with only the right people. But when the eagle flies, he's by himself. And no bird can match the eagle. I wish that the saints could see themselves as an eagle today. There's a saying, if the eagle runs into another bird, it's got to be another eagle. <clears throat> when you run into people, what do you see? Lord Jesus. You run into pigeons, you ain't seeing yourself. 
yourself or what's in you. Go to the next level. The next level is going to cause you to go to another place that the birds you fly with now can't go. <coughs> that eagle fly way above. Way up there. Praise him. They say hi. Another thing, the eagle don't eat dead animals. Ask yourself what you eat. See, today's words of wisdom. Listen to the Lord. See, it ain't jumping and shouting. <clears throat> what are you eating? Some of us, <laughs> have you ever seen somebody later on, you see them say, what did you eat? They sure look different, don't they? But the eagle stay by itself. They don't run with the wrong crowd. I'm going to a place with the Lord that I already know who I need with me. I'll say it again. I'm going to a place in the Lord that I already know who I need. And those that I don't need will never walk beside me. When you know where you're going, you learn self-discipline. You discipline yourself. You want to be an athlete? You don't hang around with folks that want to go to McDonald's every day. Because you're striving for a crown. They ain't striving for nothing but double cheeseburger. All that burger they eat, when they get on the track, see how much it keep them up and how fast they can run. And slow them down. I already don't know who's going to slow me down. And anybody slow me down, I ain't got time today. I'm wise as a serpent and harmless as a dog. I know who's going to slow me down. And I know what's going to slow me down. And I don't have no time for it. By all means necessary. All means necessary. We come into a new year. Start thinking. How much you accomplishing this year? How much have you accomplished? Have you grown? Have you got more spiritual? If you are the same place, my friend, but what I love about God, Lord Jesus, He's a God of a second chance. If you listen to what I'm saying today, the Lord, listen to me. When you leave this service today, you will think. But it's not too late to get on the right track. You don't believe the Lord can set you back on the right track, do you? Anybody know he's a God of a second chance? Yeah. I'll tell you this one story, then I'll let you go. Lord, I feel so full and pregnant today. There was a man that ended up in the belly of a whale. Crazy. Because why? He won't do what the Lord told him to do. See, you and I end up in places because we don't listen to what the Lord told us. And many times the Lord forewarned us. How many of us the Lord has shown you things through dreams and said this is gonna happen? And that thing happened, and you end up failing God. After he don't showed you. 
for y'all never been there. It's going to warn you. And that thing still overtake you. Jonah found himself in the bottom of a ship, sleeping in the midst of a storm. It is sad that people today are sleeping in the midst of a storm and don't realize that their life is at stake, but they pass asleep. They ran to Jonah and said, hey man, how can you sleep at such a time? Isn't it amazing a storm is brewing? The house is shaking, and some sleeping on the bed snoring. They can wake up, and they're in the neighbor's yard, asking themselves, how did I get here? They said, Jonah, get up! Jonah said, the reason why all of this mess is happening, because of me. You know what the Lord showed me? I'm going to preach to me. Any leader out there, listen. Sometimes a leader's decision can affect the congregation. It's not just about you. You got the saints. Don't let your selfish desire destroy the flock. Say, come, let me speak to you. Do I have any husband, the head of the home that is listening to me today? decision can destroy your family. Just by your decision. Your wife don't have to make it. You make it and see what happened. When Adam disobeyed, Eve disobeyed, no matter. Soon as Adam disobeyed, what did God do? God move right in. Our fathers don't know the place that we play and that role that we hold in that family. When the man is out of place, the house is out of place. Please listen today. That's why it's time for us men, if we are the place, to get back in place. Oh, hallelujah. Lord said, Bishop, watch Jonah. Let me teach you life lessons in Jonah. They said, Jonah, why you did that? Jonah said, I want to get rid of the problem. Get rid of me. See, some of us is patching up the problems. We're trying to trim the, the leaves, the limbs. The Lord is saying, dig it all up and get rid of it. Dig it all up. Because as soon as you trim it, the root is still there. Those limbs is going to come back. Get rid of the entire tree. Those men said, no, Jonah, we ain't going to do it. We're not going to put you over there. Jonah said, if y'all want to live, get rid of me. Finally, what did they do to Jonah? Throw him overboard. What did God have waiting for Jonah? Don't say a fish, say a whale, because that's what it was. A whale waiting for Jonah. There is heaven and hell waiting for you. Praise it. Jonah ended up in a well belly. You know where the well took him? Way down into the bottom of the sea. 
way into the deep where there's no sunlight. Here is a man in the belly of a whale under the sea. But the good thing about Jonah, he still had the faculty of his mind to remember I'm still alive and I still got an opportunity to make my wrong right. Jonah was in that whale. I'm pretty sure he didn't have no perfume to spray. <laughs> no white diamond. Stink! But Jonah said, no matter where I'm at, if I can get God's attention, that's all that matters. <coughs> get his attention. Jonah began to cry, said, God, please, get me out. God said, I'm going to let you stay here for three days and three nights. After three days and three nights, you'll come to your senses. Sometimes the Lord got to take us in places to bring us to our senses. sleeping in the whale, God talked to the whale, spoke to the whale and said, take him to this shore or beach, if you let me say, vomit him out. That whale carried Jonah up to the shore, to sand, vomit him out. What I love about Jonah, after coming up the whale's belly, Jonah didn't think about, let me go to Walmart. Jesus, do you hear the voice of the Lord today? It was so hard to listen. I might be saying, say whatever, but I'm going where the Lord told me to go. Jonah got to that city. Should have taken three days. He got there in one. See, when you meet right with God, God will meet you. But if you want to play games with that kid, he's going to meet you nowhere. Jonah preached that message. The whole city came to a standstill. When they were fasting and praying, sinners began to seek God. God said, I heard your sinners cry. God said, I will spare the city. The question is, how many know you need to seek God? How many of you know you are not at the place where you need to be? Don't fool yourself. You know you're far from God, and all you're doing is putting on a show to let somebody feel like you're all right. You know you ain't all right. You know you're trouble on the inside. Trying to put on a smile, but you know on the inside, your heart is ripped in pieces. Nobody can see it, but the Lord see it. I don't need no help, but the Lord said, I know you need some help. The question is today, who want to see God's help? I'm making all to call. Who want the Lord's help today? You know you don't drift it far. You know you're not at the place where you need to be. If you want to get to the place where God wants you, come here today. If you don't want to, listen to me. If you know you just come and just to come, don't come. Don't. Sat down to eat, rose up to play. If you know you want
want to make a change in your life and you need God's help, come to the Lord today. But if you know when you leave this building, you will continue to be the same. Don't come. Don't come to this altar if you know you do not want to change. You know you don't need the Lord's help. 